see that this 2014, the sicknesses that troubled you in 2013, 2012, 2011, 2010, you will not see it this year. I declare you the head. I declare that you are free. You are promoted. You are blessed. You are righteous. You are holy. You are strong. You are victorious. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Jesus did not die because he committed sin. Jesus died because he acquired our sin. We have entered our year of total redemption. Is it not for a woman who has been childless for over 10 years to bring forth a child? But what happens when such a woman like Hannah? Instead of bringing forth a regular child, brought forth a child that will be judge, prophet, high priest, and king in the same nation. And after having such delay, brought forth five other children. And at the end of it, she became the mother of the nation. I said, there shall be restoration tonight. And I want to say that that God has not changed. He is alive. He did it for Joseph. He did it for Hannah. He did it for Moses. There will be unusual restoration in your life. He was the major breadwinner of the family. Every person in the family milled around him. His father was late. He took care of his mother. He took care of his younger ones. He paid their fees. Now he's out of job. And the youngest child in the family, a teenager, suddenly said to him, he said, Brother, you've resigned from your job. Our elder sister that supports you in taking care of us has also lost job. He said, I suspect that there's a siege on the family. He said to her, what do you understand by siege? He said, well, our father has died. Our major breadwinner is out of job. The supporting breadwinner is gone. So very soon, all of us will die of hunger. If there is a siege, you don't get food to eat. She narrated the story of Samaria. He found that this young girl was speaking wisdom. He said, so what do you think we can do? He said, I know somewhere we will go to. And they can help us find out what is happening and pray. He said, Where? He said, In our church. Because the girl attended a different church. So she led them down. After I looked at him, I smiled. <laughs> As a young man, you have great prospects. But unfortunately, your prospect has been tampered with. So I looked further into his document and I felt that this thing was not, it was not normal. Then I found the loophole. So I asked him, when you began to make money, did you start thinking of fantasies and all the like? He dropped his head. And he owned up, he told me, he said, well, there's something that he has kept to himself, but he noticed that all this rejection started six months after he started going out with another lady. I said, very good. So what do you want to do? He said the surprising thing for him is that where he has been invited for interview, once they cite him, they will just reject him. They will say, we'll send for you, and they will never send for him. They knew. I said, well, it's very clear that an enchantment is working on you. Favor and fortune that used to follow you have been covered. It has been replaced with rejection. Something must happen. Even if you don't believe me, because you are very scientific, because of the result, you will be compelled to believe. Because through science investigates results. It does not dismiss it. It takes prejudice to find results and, and dismiss it. So 
the young man said, what will you do? I said, well, if you decide to change your ways, we can recover what has been stolen. Because Jesus Christ said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. He said he's willing. That he cannot afford to toy with his life. So we prayed a short prayer. And I said he should make the recovery confession. Father, in the name of Jesus, I recover what the enemy has stolen from me. I am truly sorry that I opened the door for the enemy to rob me. But now we serve you. I'll be faithful. And with a promise that he will remain, remain faithful to his wife, he left. Two or three months later, he came back to the prayer village. I didn't recognize him. He was differently dressed. He had a lady by his side. And he said, I am the young man who you said was robbed of his favor and fortune. He said, I told you I got three jobs and I was resented and rejected. He said, yes, yes, I remember. He said, this is my wife. I made peace with her and I promised her that I would remain faithful to her. So I came to her to let you know. He said, but the good news is that I've got four jobs. So I said, how, why four? He said suddenly all the applications that I put out, he responded to them. And I went for three of them for interviews. I was no longer rejected. I was accepted. He said the least paying job among them is giving me times two of the former salary. He said then the fourth job is the former place of work. They suddenly sent for me that they want me back on my job. He said, what do I do, sir? I said, don't go back to the former place because the enemies are still there and you will need to fight them take up a new ground. I said, anyway, which one of the jobs is paying much more than the others? And he told me, I said, well, that may be a better idea to go for the most paying job. Then he said to me, he said, sir, I've also decided that this time, as I take up this job, I will never mess around with my tights, and I will never mess around with any lady. I said, thank you for taking that decision. It's for your own self, not for my sake. Then he said, sir, Added to that, the very first salary I'm going to take on this job, I will honor the Lord with it as my first fruit. I said, you are a wise guy. Listen, everything that has been stolen from you shall be restored. Yeah. Another amen. Yeah. Another amen. Yeah. Another amen. Yeah. I don't have problem with God restoring. It is whether you will be willing to take the steps to enhance your restoration whether you will be willing to take the steps to enhance your restoration. Israel and their losses. In Exodus chapter 1, Exodus chapter 1, we read the story of the 12 tribes of Israel that came into Egypt on the invitation of Joseph during the time of extreme famine. Now, <clears throat> they had settled in Egypt. Joseph had given them the best land you know, to be landless is to be powerless. And I find many of us are living in the United States as if we are just pilgrims. Whenever God gives a covenant, he gives a land to support the covenant. So as soon as Joseph got into Egypt, he looked for a very, very fertile land and acquired. He had a vision that he will bring in his people. He brought in his people and he settled them in the land. He told Pharaoh, he said, you know, my people trade in what is called the abomination of Egyptians because Egyptians <clears throat> don't deal very much with cows. He said, therefore, I'm going to put them far from your, from your people. So you have acquired the land of Goshen, distant from them. But who tells you this place is a bush. Once men start living there and they start plotting the land and building, it has become a settlement. So within a short time, it became a very great settlement. And they multiplied into hundreds of thousands. And they became millions. So Joseph died and the generation of his brothers that came in. Then the Pharaoh that knew Joseph died also. And another Pharaoh who didn't know Joseph came to power. He now looked at Israel, the way they were prospering, and he felt threatened. 
they were growing in number their wealth was a threat their wisdom was a threat and he says certainly these people are mightier than us if we don't cut them down they will grow strong enough and mighty enough to enslave us in our land because they couldn't compare they couldn't challenge their wisdom and the, the mortality rate among them was near zero while the mortality rate among the Egyptian was high so while their own number was growing the Egyptian population growth was very very low compared to theirs and it was conspicuous apart from that their wealth made them very very conspicuous because there's a covenant between them exodus chapter 1 verse 7 exodus chapter 1 verse 7 and the children of israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty and the land was filled with them it's like by the time you count five people every one of the five or every two of the five is a hebrew and it's everywhere you go the land was dotted with them dotted 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 because the hebrews were not doing anything like family planning <laughs> if you meet the orthodox real orthodox jew today in israel the guy just delivers his children you just like them one two three four five six multiply and fill the earth <laughs> and the government pays their bills they keep their beards they do everything so one day I asked, why do they behave like this? They said, without them, Israel, state of Israel has no identity. That they give identity to Israel. They are the ones that make Israel to stand out. So nobody controls what they do. The government pays their bills. They believe in multiplication. And they operate the Mosaic law and covenant that says they are not supposed to cast their young ones. So they don't believe in child mortality. So they multiplied and the land was filled with them. You see, they said they waxed exceeding mighty. That is not just numerical might. No. That is describing strength, ability, power, finance. They were mighty. Now there arose up a new king in Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Everywhere you go, you find them. Every office they dominate. Every business that is thriving is their business. That will become your story. You aren't here to slave. You are here to take dominion. Amen. Let me hear your amen. amen. That amen sounds weak. Amen. If these fellows said they are not going to serve God and they are kicking against the Bible, you hold on to the word of God. Because that will be your reason to dominate. Amen. You see, God are the days when people made SU people to look down. No, 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 no. You know, in those days when you are born again, you are SU, you just look down, everybody pities you. No, 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 no. We square our shoulders and look straight. Why? Because we have what it takes to be bold. There is wisdom. There is a sense of security. Fear is absent. I'm not afraid of tomorrow. I'm not scared by anything that scares other people. So I can lift up my head and square my shoulder. And look the devil in the eye and say, keep quiet. So, they observed that these people were mightier. And he said, the only way we can break them down is to put up a law. We are still in charge. We have all the laws. We control the judges. We control the courts. We, make, we change the constitution. So, they made a law. And that law made the Hebrews slaves overnight. Do you remember that it was overnight that the brothers of Joseph turned them into slaves? Now 
and that generation has gone and their children are to reap what their father sowed. He said, come on, let us deal with them wisely. That's verse 10. Otherwise, they multiply continuously and it comes to pass when there is any war, they join with our enemies. That was, an, that was a flimsy excuse. The real excuse is that they are mightier than we. They are more and they are mightier. So they set them over them taskmasters. So they made a decree overnight that once you are not an Egyptian, you have no right to any CMO. Once you are not an Egyptian, you cannot own any business. If you own any business, it crosses over immediately to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh gives it to whoever he likes. But you'll be running the business on behalf of the new owner. If you don't like, you can pack out and get out of the land. Overnight, they became slaves. Dealing with a persistent health crisis, marriage disorder, spiritual disorientation, and financial disarray, the Living Faith Foundation presents Sorting Out. A program that unravels the mysteries surrounding strange and long-term challenges, smashing unyielding situations and recurring crises. Your host, PJA Olaya. Fink. Or visit our website at www.lffsortingout.org. You can also contact our head office at the Alheri Prayer Village, Kilometer 31, Kaduna Abuja Expressway, Kaduna State, Nigeria. Sorting Out, providing life solutions to life's problems. But what could have enhanced their lives because of misinformation or lack of it? Introducing 77 Things to Know About Sex, a book written by PJA Olaya, which offers you privileged information about sex such as is not commonly available today. This book will help you prepare for a positive and profitable sex life as well as expose and deal with sexual errors of the past. To order for your copy, call these numbers. 77 things to know about sex. To know is to be empowered. Hurry and get your copy. Over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burden, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Phitom, Pithom, and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. So they became slaves. They were working for no pay, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel, in spite of oppressing them, in spite of dispossessing them of their wealth. The Bible said they still multiplied. Uh -uh. they became grieved. They said, this is terrible. Look at the way they are just growing. Look at, look at their number every way, every day. We are oppressing them and they are increasing. What's this? They were sad. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor and made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar, brick, and all manner of service in the field. In spite of all this oppression, their number was increasing. So Pharaoh was still uncomfortable. And finally, Pharaoh went to the midwives. He said, look, the solution to this is kill all the sons. Midwives, as they come into the hospital for delivery, please help us. Once it's a boy, snuff out life from the boys. If it's a girl, let the girl cry. And the midwives held meeting under their leader and said, look, we can't do this. We are mothers. If we do this, it will affect our children. We can't be mothers. The, the blood of these innocent babies will work against us. You know what we'll do? 
after the Hebrew women are stronger than us. We are going to tell them, if they come to harass us, we we'll tell them, look, these Hebrew women are strong. Why they are delivering? Their eyes are not closed. But we couldn't smuggle the children to kill the children. He said, and as soon as they deliver their baby, they just hold their baby themselves. <laughs> and the Bible says, and the Lord blessed the Egyptian midwives and built for them great houses because of this goodness. Then Pharaoh decided that if this will not work, so Pharaoh called all the men and said, look, in spite of enslaving them, they are still growing in number. We are dying by the day. They are not dying. You know what we'll do? All of you watch out. Any of your Hebrew neighbors that delivers a baby and it's a boy, by law now, you kill the boy. At that point, Moses was born. And what I perceive is that when the enemy saw that a restorer and the deliverer was going to come, he decided to make a new law to make sure the deliverer is destroyed. The deliverer is destroyed. Now listen. No matter how smart the enemy is, your God is ahead of him. Amen. So while the enemy thought, I have succeeded, just like in the days of Jesus Christ, Herod was incited by the devil to go after Jesus. But God was ahead of Herod. Jesus was already out of Israel. So Moses' mother said, I can't give up this child for death. So 5.30 a.m. before dawn, they take the baby out. Miriam takes the baby in a basket and goes far away to Nile and drops the, the child in Nile by the edge and looks at where the current of Nile is very gentle and drops and begins to move by the side, putting an eye on the basket. And that she did daily. And when it is evening time and it is dark, she will pick the basket and go back home. Until one day, while she was by the riverside, a princess from Pharaoh's palace came in for a bath. She came to the river with her aids. And then she heard the cry of the baby, Wah! and said, ah! That must be one of the Hebrew babies. She said, my uncle has lost his mind. Just wants to kill every baby. Well, I don't know whether he doesn't have human feelings. He said, That baby will be my baby. Call one of the aides. You know, her motherly instinct was teared up. He said, No, no, that baby is not going to die. I'm taking that baby home. And nobody can come and touch the baby. I'm sure it must be a baby boy. And when she sent and they picked the baby, he said, Oh, what a lovely baby. Look at this beautiful baby. This is what my uncle wants to kill. This baby is not going to die. I, I took him out of water. I shall, his name shall be Moses. For out of water have I drawn him. And she took the baby and embraced the baby. And the baby was crying. But there was no breast milk. He said, look at the second problem. Who is going to breastfeed this baby now? Who is going to breastfeed this baby? Can we get anybody? And they were, said, we have to look for one of these Hebrew women. We can find somebody who, is, who has just delivered, at least to hold the baby as a second baby. He said, look, get anyone. And then Miriam stepped forward and said, I think I can get you somebody who has just delivered. I said, please go and get, we'll pay the person any amount. And she went and got Moses' mother to come and breastfeed Moses. I am saying into your life that under the nostrils of your enemy, the Lord will raise your profile. Those who think they want to destroy your fortune will be used by God to raise your fortune. Let me hear another amen.
captains, my Lord and my God. Thank you for the opportunity to hear what I have heard and to see what I have seen. I surrender my life to you. I acknowledge that I come from you and that I will return to you. You are my God and my creator. Thank you for sending Jesus, your only God in son, to take over my sin and to pay the price for my sin. Thank you for providing Jesus so that I can escape the consequence of my sins. I confess today my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I accept him as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, take over my life. Take over my sins. Take over the judgment that is due to me. And grant me your peace. Grant me your freedom. I receive forgiveness for all my sins. I receive mercy from God. Even in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I also receive eternal life. Because you have promised that anyone who believes in Jesus shall have everlasting life. I do believe in Jesus as the Son of God and as my Savior. Therefore, I receive eternal life. Therefore, I have eternal life. Thank you, Father. You have promised that you will not reject anyone that comes to you. You have also promised to forgive all those lost in who repent of their sins and call on your name. You have also promised it together, that say, nothing shall take me out of your hand. Lord Jesus, I belong to you. Thank you for taking over my life. Nothing will pluck me out of your hand. I will serve God for the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for saving my soul. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name. Oh